In today's world, military power relies more on advanced technology than size or strength alone. The United States recently unveiled an impressive new aircraft, the X-43A hypersonic plane. This aircraft can travel at extremely high speeds, making it almost unstoppable by current defense systems. Such technology could render traditional missile defenses ineffective, potentially reshaping relationships between countries. How might this technology change relationships between allied nations? And as nations rush to find ways to defend against such fast weapons, what new kinds of military competition might develop? Join us as we explore the cutting-edge technologies of the X-43A hypersonic aircraft. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration just changed the game for high-speed flight. The agency successfully flew a scramjet-powered airplane at more than five times the speed of sound, over 3,800 miles per hour. Traditional rockets must carry fuel and oxygen to work, but scramjets are different. They breathe air while flying, making them lighter and more efficient. Think of it as a car that can refuel while driving instead of carrying all its fuel. NASA's HyperX program was a bold bet on future technology. Running for eight years and costing about $230 million, the project tackled challenges that had never been attempted before. Before March 2004, no air-breathing engine had ever flown at hypersonic speeds. This wasn't just another research project, it was a chance to reimagine high-speed flight completely. The technical challenges were huge. The team needed to build a system to get the test vehicle to the right speed and then separate it cleanly to test the scramjet engine. Every step mattered and there was no room for mistakes. The researchers knew the risk were high. They spent countless hours analyzing every possible scenario, working to reduce potential problems. Even with careful planning, they understood that some risk would always remain. This wasn't about eliminating all danger, but about managing it smart enough to push the boundaries of what's possible. The potential payoff was enormous. The technology could revolutionize how aviators think about high-speed travel, from military applications to future space exploration. It was a gamble that could change everything. The X-43A was built to test a new type of jet engine called a scramjet. Scramjets are unusual because they burn fuel using air that's already moving faster than the speed of sound. The shape of the X-43A is part of the engine itself. The front pulls air inside and the back pushes it out like a car's exhaust pipe. Scramjets mainly use hydrogen as fuel, which is something new in aviation. On the successful flight, the engine used only about two pounds of hydrogen, roughly the weight of a large soda bottle. To help the engine start, the team added a small amount of a chemical called monosilane, which burns instantly when it touches air. The big difference between scramjets and rockets is that rockets have to carry around their oxygen to burn the fuel, but scramjets can use the oxygen that's already in the air. Getting rid of all that oxygen makes scramjets way lighter and smaller. However, these jets are picky. They only work when the air is already blasting by at least four and a half times the speed of sound. That's unbelievably fast, so to get a scramjet-powered plane up to that speed, they must first strap on a rocket or use a different type of jet engine. For the X-43A test flights, the team attached the aircraft to the front of a Pegasus rocket. Then, they carried this setup under a specially modified B-52 bomber, which acted like a flying launch pad. They called this combined aircraft and rocket the Stack. But there was a big challenge. The X-43A's engines needed air moving at precisely the right speed to start burning fuel. It was like trying to light a match in strong wind. If the air were moving too slowly, the engine wouldn't start. But if the air were moving too fast, the flame would blow out. The first two X-planes were designed to fly at about seven times the speed of sound. The third one was built to go even faster, Mach 10 or more. They flew very high, around 12 miles above Earth. The air becomes extremely thin at these speeds and heights almost like there's no air. NASA first tried to fly the X-43A on June 2nd, 2001, but things didn't go as planned. They used a rocket called Pegasus to push the plane forward, like giving a kid a push on a swing. But 13 seconds after the B-52 released the rocket, it lost control. The missile started shaking badly as it broke through the sound barrier, and soon after, its right wing flap broke off completely. That caused the rocket to fly way off course so NASA had to destroy it in mid-air to keep everyone safe. After investigating what happened, 
The scientists realized they didn't fully understand how much stress the rocket could handle or what problems it might face in flight. They found several small mistakes in their calculations and computer programs, which meant the rocket's guidance system wasn't ready for the job. But sometimes that's just how things go. They tried again in March 2004. This time the Pegasus rocket worked perfectly. It carried the X-plane to an incredible height of 95,000 feet and then released it. The X-plane quickly started taking in air, turned on its scramjet engine, and shot forward at a fantastic speed. It reached Mach 6.83, which means it flew at more than 4,600 miles per hour. They kept the engine running for 11 impressive seconds. In that short time, the X-plane traveled 15 miles, which is remarkable. After the engine stopped running, the team at Mission Control was still able to steer the plane for a short time. Eventually, it lost speed and fell into the ocean. Still, before that happened, the X-plane set the record as the fastest aircraft powered by air-breathing engines. Pretty impressive for just a piece of metal and technology. Let's talk about NASA's third try at flying the X-43A on November 16, 2004. They attached the X-plane to the bottom of a B-52 bomber and carried it to 40,000 feet. Then they dropped it, letting the Pegasus rocket take over and push it even higher and faster. The rocket fired powerfully, pushing the X-plane to a height of 110,000 feet and reaching an incredible speed of Mach 10. At Mach 9.8, the X-43A separated from the rocket and kept speeding ahead on its own. They started the scramjet engine at Mach 9.65 and kept it running for about 10 to 12 seconds. During this short time, the engine generated just enough power to match the force of air resistance pushing back against it. It was like two runners neck and neck in a close race, each pushing equally hard so neither could pull ahead. After the engine stopped, the plane had no more thrust to keep it flying straight so it began to glide downward. It smoothly coasted down through the sky for the next 14 minutes, eventually landing gently in the Pacific Ocean. The air pressed incredibly hard against the aircraft's surface throughout its flight, like placing a heavy monster truck on a tiny postage stamp. The pressure was more than half a bar, showing how harsh these high-speed conditions were. When the test finally ended, the X-43A had reached a remarkable top speed of Mach 9.68, in perspective, that's almost 11,000 kilometers per hour, flying about 33,000 meters above the ground. NASA conducted this daring test to see if the X-plane could survive the intense heat, pressure, and stress of speeding through the sky at these extreme conditions, something most aircraft could never handle. Impressively, the X-43A passed the test and proved it could fly at incredible speeds without breaking apart. Let's now skip ahead to January 2006. That's when the U.S. Air Force revealed an exciting new project, the FALCON scramjet missile. This advanced missile wasn't like typical missiles that can only be used once. Instead, the Falcon was designed to be launched from almost anywhere across the United States and could be reused multiple times. Its purpose was to provide a fast, flexible, and reliable way to deliver payloads or weapons at very high speeds, quickly responding to threats or missions worldwide. Fast forward to March, and the Air Force Research Lab introduced its new scramjet test aircraft, known as the Wave Rider. They officially named it the X-51A. Like before, they attached this advanced test plane underneath a B-52 bomber, which served as its flying launch platform. On the 26th of May, 2010, they successfully dropped the X-51A from the bomber, marking its very first flight. But even before this new test aircraft took flight, NASA scientists at the Dryden Research Center were already looking far into the future. After finishing up the earlier X-43 tests in 2004, they started imagining what could come next. They believed that all their years of hard work and learning about scramjet technology would eventually lead to something big, like a two-part spacecraft capable of reliably carrying astronauts into space. They hoped their research would lead within 20 years to a spacecraft that could regularly take people into orbit faster and more efficiently than before. But building a single-stage spacecraft that could fly into orbit in one go, like the National Aerospace Plane, seemed unlikely. They weren't counting on that happening anytime soon. They had big plans to build more advanced versions of the X-43, 
but by June 2013, these ideas were either paused or canceled entirely. Initially, NASA wanted to keep the basic shape and concept of the X-43, but make the aircraft much larger and more powerful, allowing it to perform more ambitious missions. One of these planned upgrades was called the X-43B. Think of it as the bigger, stronger brother of the original X-43A. This new aircraft would carry a more complicated and powerful engine system, combining a regular jet engine and rocket or using a unique hybrid rocket and ramjet setup called ISTAR. This plan ushered in the X-43C, which was planned to be bigger than the original X-43A. Its main goal was to test whether a scramjet could run well using hydrocarbon fuel. Most scramjet engines use hydrogen. After all, it burns quickly at high speeds but can be tricky to handle. NASA considered using an engine called HiTech, which runs on kerosene-like fuels that are easier and safer to use. The idea was to build a full-sized engine that used its fuel not only for power, but also to keep the engine cool. While cooling the engine, the fuel would break down chemically from long, complex molecules into smaller, simpler ones. These simpler molecules burn faster and more efficiently, making the engine powerful and easier to manage at high speeds. However, NASA stopped work on the X-43C project in 2004 without setting a new restart date. A news report explained that the project was paused, mentioning Rear Admiral Craig E. Steidel, who spoke about it during a meeting with the House Space and Aeronautics Subcommittee on March 18, 2004. By the middle of 2005, the project still had some funding, but only until the end of that year. There was also another planned aircraft called the X-43D. This version would have been almost the same as the X-43A, but designed to reach even higher speeds, up to Mach 15, or 15 times the speed of sound. But by September 2007, the only progress made was an introductory study on whether it was even possible. This feasibility study was done by Donald B. Johnson from Boeing and Jeffrey S. Robinson from NASA's Langley Research Center. The force application and launch from Continental United States Project was a joint effort between the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency and the United States Air Force. It was part of the Prompt Global Strike Program and split into two main parts. The first part of the project focused on creating a system called the Small Launch System. This system aimed to launch small satellites into Earth's orbit and accelerate fast-moving gliding weapons known as hypersonic glide vehicles. The second part of the project aimed at developing hypersonic weapon systems. This involved creating a high-performance hypersonic glider called the X-41 Common Arrow Vehicle. Most of the research involved test flights of technology demonstrators, special aircraft built to test new ideas about hypersonic flight. For the X-41 Common Aero Vehicle, they developed test vehicles called HTV-1 and HTV-2. Another test vehicle, HTV-3, was designed to test technologies for the hypersonic cruise. The hypersonic technology vehicle had two notable test flights. The first occurred on the 22nd of April, 2010, and the second on the 11th of August, 2011, when it reached Mach 20. Both flights ended unexpectedly before completing their full missions. The HTV-3X Black Swift was an ambitious technological demonstrator with a unique mission. It was designed to take off from a regular runway, accelerate to Mach 6, about 7,400 kilometers per hour, or 4,600 miles per hour, complete its mission, and then land again. The core vision was simple, create a craft that could launch from the United States and reach any point on Earth within one to two hours. In the mid-1960s, the CIA began exploring a high-speed spy plane called Project Isinglass. This work evolved into Rhineberry, an ambitious Mach 17 air-launched reconnaissance aircraft design. Like many ambitious projects, Rhineberry was eventually canceled. Henry F. Cooper, who directed the Strategic Defense Initiative under President Reagan, painted a stark picture of space plane development. According to Cooper, the United States spent $4 billion on space plane projects during the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s. This massive investment did not include earlier programs like Dinosaur and Isinglass or potential future projects. When Cooper testified before Congress in 2001, his assessment was blunt. The billions spent had produced little tangible result. One crashed vehicle, a non-operational test vehicle, 
some drop test models, and static display pieces. Despite this discouraging history, the Falcon project received $170 million in funding for the 2008 budget year, demonstrating continued interest in the potential of rapid global deployment technology. In 2003, the Hypersonic Weapon System project started its first phase. During this phase, three companies were contracted to research and develop new hypersonic aircraft technologies. Each company received between $1.5 million to explore and create advanced designs for these high-speed vehicles. The three companies selected were Andrew Space Inc. from Seattle, Lockheed Martin Aeronautics Co. from Palmdale, and Northrop Grumman Corp's Air Combat Systems from El Segundo. Out of these three, Lockheed Martin did the best job and was chosen as the only company to move on to Phase 2 of the project in 24. Lockheed Martin's goal in Phase 2 was to continue developing the technology further and find ways to reduce risk to ensure the program's success. The United States' economic rival, China, has successfully tested a hypersonic aircraft with an unusually large body. The plane reached high speeds and could fly from Beijing to New York in just two hours. During its first publicly announced test flight, a miniature version of this aircraft reached a top speed of Mach 6.56, which is about 8,100 kilometers per hour. This test was the first demonstration of a design many people thought impossible when it was described six years ago. The new aircraft is very different from earlier supersonic planes. Instead of being narrow, it has a wide body and large, cape-like wings. This means future high-speed planes might carry as many passengers or as much cargo as regular wide-body jets. After 10 years of research, Kui's team got permission to test their new aircraft at China's Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert. In August 2021, they flew it successfully for nearly 20 minutes. This flight solved a prominent problem airplane designers faced for a long time. Usually, the faster a plane flies, the less space it has inside. For example, the Concorde supersonic airliner was so tight that adults could easily bump their heads while standing inside. Right now, most hypersonic planes, flying faster than Mach 5 or about 6,174 kilometers per hour, have very little space inside. Because of this, they are used mainly by the military as missiles or unmanned spy planes. The new design aims to fix these problems, allowing for more extensive and more useful hypersonic planes in the future. Because the project was important and sensitive, the test flight was kept secret for three years. Kui hasn't shared details about when the full-size aircraft will be ready or when its first flight might happen. The United States and China are both developing hypersonic missiles, which are high-speed missiles capable of flying five times faster than sound or more. However, the United States remains ahead because its technology is more advanced and reliable and has been tested successfully many times over the years. American hypersonic programs like the X-51 Wave Rider and other military systems have proven their abilities through multiple successful flights, showing stability and accuracy. In contrast, although progressing quickly, China's hypersonic missiles have not yet shown the same level of proven reliability or accuracy as their American counterparts. While China is catching up fast, the United States continues to hold the advantage with more mature, trustworthy hypersonic missile systems. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.